Welcome to the Jay Tyner Show, where we discuss all things wealth management and retirement planning. And as always, the goal of our team here at Semax Financial Group is to help you focus more on your life and less on your money. Now, as a reminder, check with your current advisor, planner, CPA, and read our disclosure in the video description below. Subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date on all of our new content. And by the way, if you have questions or need a 15-minute free consultation, please visit semax.com or call 336-856-0080. Hello and welcome. On behalf of Jordan, Michael, my name is Matt. The three of us are here from, from Semax, uh, three different advisors. We're here to give you a little bit of information about retirement trusts, how they work, what are they, some of the some of the ins and outs of them. Now, in the past, we've done it as kind of a, we each take turns, but I think this is better served as a little bit more of a round robin conversation. So that's what we're going to do here. So at any point in time, we can all just kind of jump in, interject, share some thoughts. But right off the top, what is a retirement trust? So essentially, a trust is a means of, of putting your funds into a, a, a product, right? So think about this, uh, this, this legal product, this binding contract that says, when I pass away, I want my funds to be distributed in a certain fashion. Right. So even though you've passed away, you've made control of those funds. Now, where a retirement trust comes into play is usually when you have an IRA account, if it goes to a trust, everything gets distributed all at once. That's a massive tax hit. A retirement trust lets you have a little bit more control over it, but it moves it into an IRA inside of the trust. So uh, I don't want to dominate the conversation here, but feel, feel free to jump in at any point in time. Otherwise, I'll just keep going. But <laughs> I would say this. It's, it's designed in that way because what you're trying to do is maintain that tax-favored advantage of it being in an IRA. But where I, where I think about where this might be helpful is think if you have a situation where, for whatever reason – you just don't trust your son. You say, I've got a massive spendthrift here. I just, I don't think that he's in a position where we want to give him all these assets and just turn it over to him. Well, a trust may be the right way to do it. You, you have control over those assets or it could be something because we have a client who's in the situation. Uh, it's a second marriage and you have kids from a previous marriage. You say, I want to make sure my spouse is taken care of. I also want to make sure my kids ultimately inherit these assets. I don't want there to be a massive tax burden all at one time. That's where a retirement trust can come into play. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as the nuts and bolts of it go, do you all have any input or any thoughts as far as how we can, how we can make that work? I, I would just say you want to be really careful and work with a professional and a financial advisor to help generate the documents and make sure in naming the beneficiaries that it's done properly and that the trust is worded pop properly so that we don't have any unexpected tax tax issues with it. Um, and it is, um, I will, will say obviously an extra layer of, of paperwork for down the road, you know, your beneficiaries and the executor of your estate. Yeah, I, I would second that entirely. I think when it comes to a trust, there are pros and there are cons and you need to know the positives. You also need to know the negatives. So when it comes to a trust, yes, there can be tax advantages, but there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of headache. And, and I think the key thing here is because we ran across this a couple of days ago, there was a situation where someone kind of got the ball rolling. They said, we're going to make sure our IRA goes into a trust, but they didn't set it up as a pro appropriate retirement trust meaning that that trust was not going to hold all of those IRA assets mm -hmm. and they got hit with a massive tax bill. So this is something that you want to do appropriately. And, and the reality is if you don't have a reason for doing a trust, don't do a trust. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, I think that that's key. Um, when it comes to the beneficiary protections though, I, I, I think it's not always as negative as well. My son's spending all my money. There are also other cases you know, it could be it could be a, a spouse. It could be something where you want to have a little bit more control as far as how things are dispersed to different charities. Remember, IRA money is going to go tax free to a charity, and so you may want to have those funds flow out over a period of time. So this could be from a more altruistic, positive standpoint. It, it's not necessarily that you've got that one spendthrift child that's the the thorn in your side either. Um, here's the bottom line. When it comes to your retirement, you've got this massive nest egg, right? And, and and I think it's key when we're looking at it to say, okay, we want to protect those funds. We want to put our best foot forward. But you also want to maintain that measure of control. That's where the trust comes into play. 
if you've got if you need more information, if you've got more questions, you're welcome to reach out to us. We can sit down, talk about it with you one on one. We can also link you up with an attorney. We have a group that we that we work with. Uh, we also have a CPA on staff that can help from a tax standpoint. So when we're looking at these types of things, I think it's important to look at it from all angles and not just look at it through that fine lens. But if you have questions, you're welcome to reach out to us. I hope this has been beneficial and it's at least opened your eyes to another thing that is available and is out there. On behalf of Jordan and Michael, I'm Matt. Thanks and have a wonderful afternoon.